Okay, so let's test this scope out. We have Venus out there. I know it's close to the light, but we have Saturn that's in good viewing. We have the moon. It's about two days before a full moon, and then we have Jupiter. What we're gonna be doing is looking at all that stuff on this guy. Next video, which might go on the members, I might do the 102 short tube F5 Celestron against this one. Why? Because this is a 90 millimeter F5. The other one I have is a 102 F5. So let's see how bad the color correction is on a regular short tube refractor that you guys are probably familiar with comparing to this guy. Then on the final video that would probably go on my members video because I need to put something on there. And it's not fair to people who do pay 99 cents once a month. They need to have some thing to view as well. We're gonna then see, I have a friend who has a Skywatcher 90 millimeter F10 refractor. This is 90 millimeter F5. And from what we hear or I've read, this is actually comparable to an F8 Acromat. I think it's better, but uh, let's see if I can borrow that one, the 90 millimeter F10 and see, is it about equal? Is it a little worse or a little bit better? Anyway, guys, let's get to it. Okay, guys, so today it's about minus eight or nine Celsius, which is pretty cold, but it feels like minus 18 Celsius because of the wind chill. Oh, already found Venus. Now it's a tiny bit high, let me bring it down. That should be a better view. And I'm back from Mexico. Okay, that's a small view. I want to pump up the power. So, so we can look at it better view. Then let me see if I can put the camera so you guys can see. So I am jumping all the way up to a 4.7 from a 24.5, which is lots of power. I only give this guy about six minutes of cool down. So really that's not a lot. It looks like a half a moon or half a sphere. So I'm going to put a two times barrel and a 6.7 ultra wide 4000 meat pan eyepiece. Let's see how it's still in the field view. And I don't see any false color. To me it looks like Venus is nice and white little bit of a yellowish hue. No, maybe let me take the camera here. So what I'm gonna do is look back off the power a little bit. Just go to the 6.7 alone. Without the barrel. And let me see if I can show you guys in the eyepiece. But the image to me in the 6.7 with the barrel looked actually very good. Okay, so here's Venus. I'm at a 6.7 ultra wide. Kind of looks like a crescent moon. Ever since I went to this camera adapter, I find it so much more harder to record. Um, let's take a look at the moon, okay. Oh yeah, visually you can see it much better than my iPhone 10. My iPhone 13 Pro, which I normally use because it has three cameras. Sometimes it's always trying to zoom. It's not focusing uh, when I use the camera adapter. So I don't know if I'm gonna go back to the old camera adapter I used to have. I used, I used to have less uh, problems with the old one, the Celestron Next Gen. Okay, I want to zoom in. So you know what, while I'm here, do I see in a chromatic aberration? I do see a little bit at the edge only, but the actual moon craters and everything look really crisp. Way better than a short tube 80 millimeter or 90 millimeter. Now I'm sure too, if I give this guy more cooling, it would look amazing. So I think there is a little bit of 
chromatic aberration, but remember when I tested the iStar 5-inch F12? It also had a little bit of chromatic aberration. We did look at the moon. Well, I think off-camera we did. And we stopped recording. But that didn't mean it was any less sharp. So this seems to be something like that. It's very sharp. It does have a tiny bit of chromatic aberration for this small of a guy. Okay, so here is the moon in the Sky 90. Just a little bit of that Terminator there. to a 6.7 so I can see it fairly big okay now I'm gonna use a two times barlow so I'm probably I would say at the maximum or even a little bit more with the 6.7 and the two times barlow and again I apologize because I wanted to put the camera to everything and what what happens is this camera adapter is just I don't know why, with my old one, I just did it much easier. Why am I having a harder time with a more precise one? Okay, so Jupiter looks pretty good. I don't know what the seeing conditions is. You know, we got almost a full moon. I only gave it, well, I mean, maybe up to now is probably 15 or 20 minutes of cool down time. I think it probably needs more because the banding is not very precise. The sweet spot on the focus is very minor. It's almost like a millimeter. And that's why I always wished these Takahashi's came with a dual speed. Okay, I think I found the sweet spot there. Now, maybe if I came another half an hour, it'd be a little bit better, and maybe Jupiter would be a little bit higher. But for a short tube fracker, it's actually not bad at all. Now again, I think on the next video, why don't we try comparing this to a 102 F5? I know it's an Acromat, but let's see if we can see a lot more image, the quality of, of the image in contrast, and how bad is the color fringing on both of these, or F5? Does this like suppress it a lot? But would also then the final video be how does a 90 millimeter fluorite doublet compared to an acromat of about F10. So okay guys, that's it for now. I think that these, this little tack is really nice. You know, if you want something for like daytime, uh, viewing animals, cityscape, or when I came from Mexico, you know, we were looking at whale hunting, and this would have been the perfect thing for that, right? Nice high quality and a short little compact. But it also does fairly well on the planets too. A little bit of color fringing, as to be expected with a short refractor of this size. I guarantee if we're using like a 80 millimeter F5 or the 102 F5, it's probably gonna be huge percent, like 50% more. But I don't wanna just say it unless we're doing it side by side. So let's do that for the next video. And um, that's it. Joe Jaguar, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. If you know anybody getting in the hobby, or if you know anybody in the forums that's maybe asked about this little guy, uh, this is now the uh, second video I am doing for it. The next one is gonna compare it against a 102 F5. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna borrow a 90 millimeter, which is the same as this, but F10. So I wanna just see if the color correction, because what I read, that's about an F8 equivalent. Uh, it could be, but I'm also thinking maybe it could even be a little bit better like F10, I don't know. So let's 
Let's try and find out. Uh, that's it for me. I'm kind of cold. I'm minus 18 here. Now the building and the fence does block most of that uh, wind, which is great. But um, I'll be back. Let me warm up and we'll see on the next video. And also I do have members video where once a month I put a special video. I think I'm going to put the final video of this guy. This one against the 90 millimeter F10 on the members. So if you want to join and see, there are some videos that do not go public. It's only 99 cents. And you see something that's not going to go on the live channel. Why not you? Why not me?